Well, praise the Lord. Are you ready to get into the Word? On Wednesday nights, we're doing our Ephesians study. Um, you know, Wednesdays are our verse-by-verse expositional study from the Scripture, just going um, right through uh, different books of the Bible. Uh, we're not going in, in a particular order or anything. Um, we've done different books, and we'll continue to do that. And, um, you, can, you know, so it's not a J. Vernon McGee style. Or anybody remember through the Bible with J. Vernon McGee? You know, he's been in heaven for years. Um, they still air, uh, just like they still air Charles Capp's stuff, um, who's been in heaven. Um, but uh, he did the Through the Bible series. I believe it was a three-year um, sermon series. And they just would keep going through that, and they, that's what they do now, is they just run them and, and go through there. And um, I tell you what, he, I enjoy listening to J. Vernon McGee going through the Bible. And so I uh, so may not have that unique voice and may not be quite the scholar that uh, Brother McGee was, and, and, uh, um, but I am who I am, I'm who God called me to be, and and we'll do the best I can to um, expound upon um, the book of Ephesians right now. What we did um, last week was we started, you know, talking about walking in the light. And, uh, and, and how many of you know we once were in darkness, but we're now children of light. And we're to walk in that light, we're to, um, to pursue those things, good things, you know, and all of that. Uh, to not fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness and so on that we, we shared about. And, and, um, and uh, we closed last week off with verse 10 with um, that it is our, uh, our, God's will for us to find out what the will of the Lord is. And I hope um, uh, we're doing that. We're spending more time in the Word as a church we have had, um, with the encouragement to, to do a Bible reading every day, we have had um, a, a really large amount of people that I know have done that. A lot of you uh, went through the Bible. Did anybody go through the Bible last year in a Bible reading plan for your first time? Uh, for your first time? That was your first time to just do the thing? Yeah. And um, it wasn't it wonderful? You know, and uh, and so I know some of us are just continuing, you know, to do that, and uh, um, it's pretty cool. You're reading through the New Testament uh, more than once, of course, in the in the plan that I used, and uh, I know a few of us use the um, Victory Bible Reading Plan, and you get a Psalm or a Proverb every day. You're reading um, that you do the the New Testament a couple times, and and the whole Bible once and so it's pretty pretty cool um but we can seek the will of the lord through that but we can also seek the will of the lord through our personal life and we kind of got into that lord um you know this this is what i'm thinking about doing and i, I heard some people talking about that and was able to remind you know just do that look lord, i think i think i'm gonna do this and then the check in the spirit no oh, on second thought i think what i'm gonna do is this and uh and you find that peace and so that inward witness of the Spirit we have. Um, and if you just pray for God to show you His will, in the broader sense, what do you want, Lord? You know, don't be afraid to pray that prayer. I know I don't want to go back and preach the end of last, last week's uh, uh, teaching, but it's, it's amazing how Christians will get nervous in the service. If I, if I just say, Lord... I'm yours. Everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours. Just use me, God. That He might call me to Siberia, or you know, He may He may have me do this, and we're like, I don't want to do that. He may, you know, have this. You know what? God's perfect will. This is what I always tell everybody: is more fulfilling, will bring more joy, more satisfaction, more happiness more peace, uh, more blessing to your life than any plan that you could come up with on your own. And I can tell you that as a fact. Um, even uh, when, you're, when He puts you in a place where you don't know why am I here or whatever, you know, Lord, here I am and 
uh, you know, you can, if you choose to serve God and worship Him and honor Him in that, He will make amazing things happen. And uh, boy, I've got a, uh, I could expound upon that, but again, we dealt with that last week, but do it! Just give God everything. Give Him your life and let Him, you know, what is it you want me to do? And don't be afraid of what He's going to say to do. He'll lead you one step at a time. Isn't that how He did it with Abraham? Abraham couldn't have handled it if God told him everything that he was going to do and all that was going on. He just said, I want you to leave your father's house and all of your kindred and go to a place that I will show you. So, from that, we can derive that God probably said, head out this way. <laughs> this place, I'll show you. He didn't say, go to this place, such and such place, look it up in the, in, in, you know, put, plug it into your GPS on the camel and, um, and head out. He didn't say, you know, get your atlas out and look it up. No, he just said, a place I will show you. And step by step, he led Abraham on the journey. And he's doing that in all of our lives. We're all on a journey. And it's exciting. Anything God tells you to do, there is such satisfaction in it. I really encourage it. So walk in the light and uh, seek His will. Find out what's acceptable to God. Look for His, his good pleasure and all of that. It's, it's awesome. But tonight, <clears throat> we're going to pick it up. Um, with, uh, where did we leave off? We did t- verse 10 um, last week. And, um, and picking up at verse 11, it says, in light of that, and he's went back and forth, and he said, you know, he was revealing to us earlier on, you know, things that were um, particular sins and uh, giving us examples of some of that. Then he talks about walking in the light. Instead of that, walk in the light. And he goes back to um, some of the, the negative, just by saying, so when you walk in the light, when you're seeking to do God's will, you're not going to be doing this. One of the ways to walk in the light is to make a commitment. And here's what he's saying. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. It's For it's shameful even to speak of those things done in secret. But all those things exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever is made manifest in light. Um, he says, therefore, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. We need to be spiritually in tune, spiritually alive, and the Lord will light our path. You know, the, 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 um, the Old Testament tells us that His Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And, and it was like, Lord, what's, what's up with the the lamp and the light and, and all of that and and you know and, and I'm I'm a I'm an image person, you know. I, I really like word pictures. I like a story, you know, Jesus is such a master at that and being able to communicate through that, you could get an understanding of things so much that way. And um, and I was asking Lord what what is that about? And you know and and he reminded me of when I was growing up in uh, um, in my childhood, I would go to my great grandma's, Grandma Greenies, and she had a chicken coop outside. And uh, we had to, you know, um, if we stayed there, we had to go out and get the eggs in the morning. And um, and and it was while it was still dark out there, and we'd have to go shut it up at night, you know, close it and everything. And so. You know, there's a couple of times you'd go out in the dark, and she had the old military flashlight. Remember those old green flashlights that had, you know, the 90 degree, and you had little red lenses you could put in them, and all that. And so she would handle it. Now I'm a city boy. These chickens, and I, it, I, it was not pleasant for me. I'm not used to that. They weren't real thrilled about me reaching in there and getting their eggs that they were sitting on, and so you. And I'm like, oh, I'm scared. And all of this stuff. But I would be nervous just walking out there because she had a big yard and then you had to go through the gate um, back to where all of, she called it her garden, but, you know, she had a two and a half acres and, and her garden was like a little farm, really, almost. And, and you know, and, and past some of the, the main plants she had was the chicken coop. And so I have to go through all, 
all this and through the path, you know, once you go through the gate to get there. And, uh, <clears throat> and the Lord showed me, it's like when you were little and you were all nervous like that, you would take that flashlight and you would light your path where you were going to walk. But, you know, when, when you're in place, if you're just sitting in the backyard and, uh, you know, at the, you know at, 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 or, on, or swinging on the wood swing, she had a, those old metal lawn chairs and, uh, and, a, and a, a swing out there. And, and so if, you, if you're out there, you just, you just need a lamp, you know, to light up right where you're at, you're stationary. But when you're moving, you need to light the path ahead of you. You need to see what's before you. And he said, that's my work. When I have you just blooming where you're planted, in a place in your life where you're stationary, I will give you the light you need. I will be a lamp to your feet. I will keep you in the light. And when, when I'm calling you to do something, and it's, you've never done it before, and you're scared, you know, intimidated by it, you know, when I first started out, when God would ask me to do something, you know, it, it was not as easy as it is. You train yourself and get used to it. Um, it, it can always be like, okay, God, I'm just going to trust you. Uh, you know, here we go. And that's the excitement of the life that we live. And He'll light that path for you. He'll make the way. He'll give you the illumination you need to see where you're going. And, it, and that light only lit far enough ahead of me to where I knew the next few steps. It didn't light everything. Everything else was dark, but it would, it would give me the ability to go the next few steps. And He'll give you the light to do the next thing, the next steps that you need to do. And the tools, the equipment, the giftings that you're going to need to do. We need to embrace that challenge and say, all right, I'm going to go out there, and it may, it may be something I'm not used to, but Lord, I am all in. I'll do it. I'll go get those eggs. <laughs> and, uh, and I just had to get used to it, and as I did it more, you know, I mean, we, we, didn't, we weren't there all the time, and we didn't spend the night all the time, and so, um, so you know, I'd have to get myself to go out there and do it. And, uh, but as I got older and did it, you know, more and more than it was just something I just needed to do. And I uh, was able to embrace it a little easier. And, and that's the life, the excitement of what we have. And God will make the way. He has, he has given me the ability, responsibilities to do things that I have no training, no, no um, experience for in, in ministry as well as in the secular realm. And he'll give you that task. And it's like, you know, I've gotten to the point um, years ago where it's like, just come on, Lord, whatever it is. I, you know, when I would have um, opportunities uh, where it's like, well, we'd like to do this, you know, um, say it's in your secular job and my secular job, it'd be like, well, we're going to, uh, we're going to fill this position. Um, you think you'd be interested in, in being a programmer? you know, for the CNC, DNC machines. And, and uh, well, we had people who were college graduates, either engineering graduates or, um, you know, computer <laughs> science graduates and all that, that come in and were doing some of those, these positions and said, you think you'd do that? And I said, sure. Yeah, I, I can do that. And I had no experience in that, no degree in that, and, um, and I just had to trust God. And I would have to pray for His light, because they gave me a book that was this thick with the programming language, and said, you've got two weeks to learn this, which was already a pretty big deal. It was uh, uh, McDonnell Douglas uh, put that out, it's Boeing in St. Louis now, but it was McDonnell Douglas Corporation, and it was called Mac Auto. And it was a programming language for programming these machines to do all this CNC work, DNC work, and in, in a major way. I mean, you know, you, we might have 120 tool changes. You know, we had machines that had chains with, you know, 60, 80, 120 uh, positions for big tools and stuff. And we'd have different pallets and have to 
program, you know, and, and then they would index and you'd have to program all the machining as that part would advance step by step on the fixtures or in the vices and all the way through all that. It was, you know, it was uh, interesting, but I'm not trained in that. And they said, you got two weeks to do it. And, and then they, I, I start for a couple days or so. I'm, I'm getting the basics, learning, you know, how they're using the macros and, and some of the, uh, com the basic commands in the language, you know, to drive the machine, to drive the tool path and so on. And already have to use a CAD uh, a program. And I went to a college course and, you know, and got to sharpen my skills on that, but I was learning that on my own, you know, uh, AutoCAD, and and then I got to go do a couple semesters at the college, and and um, and that helped, but I've got to get in here and do this, and then they said, we're going to have you work the night shift. Well, the night shift programmer was the one who had to fix any machine, any problems with the program out there on the floor. If uh, engine, one of us engineers sent the program out there, we had to fix that if it wasn't right, you know, because you got to check this thing out. You know, there's a lot going in there, and if you don't program, if you fig don't figure a clamp on the fixture, you could be rapiding, you know. Our, our slow machines, the rapid rate was 200 inches a minute, but, um, but we started uh, putting some CNC and DNC machines in there that had a rapid speed of 2,000 inches a minute. Now, if you don't figure... When you design all of this and put that in there and are going to program it, you don't figure for a clamp, and it's going across, you know, 2,000. It's what they call a crash, <laughs> and it's noisy and it's scary, and the and the and the operators out there on the floor they hate your guts. It's you know kind of um, you know uh, if you do things that make them or cause a crash, now I'd have to go out there, and sure enough, right off the bat. We need you out there. We got a machine down, and we need to get you know production has to be made. We got to get that program. Up. I don't even know the language. I said, God, help me, help. And he's like, go to the, go to the previous programs, and look at an old program. And so I hope we had file drawers of years of different programs. And so I, I went to the old pro, the programs that had been done for that particular machine, pulled the drawer open, kind of started looking through all these folders and just, help me, God, help me, i got to get this going. And you know what? He would give me light. The right one, pull it out. It was similar to the kind of job in, as far as the language and the commands needed to fix it. So I could look at what the programmer had done wrong because uh, I, I'm getting into too much detail. But um, it put out in a post-process into a different, in what they call EIA language, which is what I used to be a machinist and so I operated in that. But you had to program it in another language and run it through the post-processor. So I had to go through and see where the program was so I could run it through and get them the right stuff. I knew how to fix it in EIA. I could do that. I used to edit my machine all the time, eliminate a cut and make the job go faster and get me more bonus and stuff. But um, I was like, Lord, what do I do? And he showed me. And that was time and time again. But right off the bat, I never got the two weeks. I was baptized in fire suit. I just ended up going out there and, and, you know, and handled anything that needed to be done that week on nights. And, and, um, and when I got back to it, it wasn't, okay, I'm just going to study now. Nope, they started stacking programs and start doing it. So I just would say, Lord, help me. And I would go, I would find a job and I learned it by seeing. And I was like, that's how they do that. And here's how they do it. And I, and I studied extra. You know, you got to do in the natural as well. Faith without works is dead. He'll give you light, but you got to put in your part. And so, until I got that down, I would go in early, stay late. And, and during that period, I could be able to get a little bit of that in. And, and 
He just gave me the gifting, the light that I needed, never having went to college for that. And I ended up becoming a level two engineer for both sides of our engineering department. But I had other programmers that were college graduates, engineering, computer science graduates. They used to come to me for help. Because I prayed, Lord, I don't have the ability. But I have the mind of Christ. I don't have the wisdom. Will you give me? You created all the principles of engineering and mathematics and all the algebraic equations and the formula and trigonometry, all the stuff I had to have. And he deposited it in me. And I became a very successful engineer on the regular side of engineering and the computer programming side because he gave me light. And, uh, and he, he can do that in your life. I know that's a long story, but it's just an example in practical everyday life. Well, well, that's, you know, you're a preacher. God doesn't. No, this, this, is, this is believers. <laughs> He's going to do that for us. So, so just know that we're living in the light. God, Christ will give you light. Can you say Christ will give me light? But how does that happen? It's to live in the light. To seek God. To spend time in the Word. I always get, I get encouraged to hear somebody listening to the Word, a podcast or a radio minister or studying, you know, and looking and, you know, in their study saying, what about this scripture and stuff? Because you're seeking that. You're living in the light because we don't walk in darkness. And if you're busy in the light, you don't have time to fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. Those are distractions. We can be a light that shines to them. Um, Now we get to verse 15 through 17. It says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Just letting it soak in, because this is so relevant. This is one of the conversations we had tonight. There's, I don't know, the news, it's, everything's just bad news. It's, the days are evil. <laughs> Amen. Therefore, he says this again, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Oh, folks, this is why I love Ephesians, why I love the Apostle Paul. I love God's Word because this is such good news. He taught me how to look at His Word um, in, in as I studied and had some people discipling me and helping me to to learn how to study, but it says, see then that you walk circumspectly. And, And you know, our English word circumspect comes from the Latin word circumspicio. Um, And it signifies to look around on all sides. To be every way watchful, wary and cautious in order to avoid dangers. What he's telling us to do is to to discern enemies before they come too near. To be circumspect. To look around on all sides. You know, um, in modern times when we had 9-11 happen, what did they what did they tell everybody? Be vigilant. Be watchful. You know, they said, watch, you know, Uh, Look around. You got a neighbor doing some weird things, getting a whole bunch of fertilizer, and they don't even have a a big farm to use the fertilizer. And he, you know, is always be watching, always be aware. Um, But even in driver's education, remember when you went to driver's ed and behind the wheel, and they said, scan, look, you know, keep your focus ahead of you, but always be taking a glance. And looking behind you, looking in the what's going on on the side of you, be aware of what's happening. Drive for the other person. It's be vigilant. You see somebody on the road, um, are they kind of swerving into your lane? Be be vigilant. Be watchful. Be circumstance. Be aware of any potential danger. And and it tells us. To, uh, to be circumspect. 
Look in all around us. We have an enemy who's not going to, you know, it's not like uh, uh, in the Revolutionary War, you had two sides of the military that would line up, you know. Um, you know, even in the Bible times, you would see some of that, although they got some creative go around here, do this, and, and some of that. But a lot of times you would see, on, you know, like in David and Goliath, you had Israel and the armies of Philistia, you know, on one side. And so here's the Philistines on one side of the valley up on this slope. And there's the army of Israel on the other side of the valley on this slope. And Goliath was going down every day. But what did they do? They, they, would, they would go to battle. In the Revolutionary War times, they would go to battle and they had muskets and they'd line up and you'd have the... Have you ever seen any of that kind of depicted? They'd, they'd have the one line, they'd go up and they'd kneel down and they'd fire and then the... And then the or they'd fire and then they'd kneel down and the, the line behind them would fire over them and while they're reloading theirs. And so then they would get down and, 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 and they would try to advance and, and they just kept going to, toward each other. Um, but the devil doesn't fight clean. In modern times, we got into Korea and then you know Vietnam especially, and they started learning about guerrilla warfare tactics, and they could be coming from any direction. And it's always been that way. Um, always be aware, circumspect, so the devil can't blindside you. It's the walking in the light. When God shows you an area in your life, be aware of that. That's a vulnerability. The devil's going to try to come in on that. Be, be in the Word, and revelation, in your confession, and be solid in that stuff. Be ready for that kind of thing. Um, in the original Greek, it's akribos, meaning exact, uh, means, which means exactly, accurately, and diligently. Um, we're supposed to be doers of the word, workers of the word, rightly dividing the word, you know, having an understanding of the word. Not not no longer babes, but but mature in the word, getting to know how to use it. You know, when I first started out, somebody was telling me how um, they they would just open their Bible. That's where they're at right now, and they'll just open their Bible and 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 study, you know, whatever's there. And I remember when I was this brand new baby in Christ. And I'd be like, Lord, here's, here's what's going on in my life. I don't know how to, you know, find stuff in the Word at this point yet. Here, here, uh, what do I do? And I just, and you know, and I would just, sometimes I'd just kind of drop it open and what do you have to say to me? And I'd do that sort of thing, drop it open and, and you know, nothing stand out. I had no idea. I'd have been in trouble with the church I was going to, didn't believe in in, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and all, but I'm just asking God, you know, some supernatural, and, and I would look, and nothing, you know, that, you know, that's a discerning of the Spirit, but where God's trying to speak to me, and not see, it, and so sometimes I'd flip a page or two, and then all of a sudden, a, a, a verse would stand out, and sometimes when I'm like, what do I do? He would make me, it fall, you know, get to it, whether it would just fall open to it, which it did in the very beginning, that's how it worked. Then it was flip a, flip around a little bit, and, and then, I, I can't explain it. I just, I knew this was it. And, and, and right there. And it would lift, it would just almost lift up, stand out. And it'd be the answer to what I'm praying about. You know what happened? He quit doing that. It wasn't a long time, because I was really reading the Bible and studying it. I'm learning you know, uh, different things and learning how to use a concordance and all. And he quit doing that because I'm not a baby anymore. And he expected me to learn how to go to and find the answers in the Word. He still to this day will do that at times. But that's not the norm anymore. It hadn't been for a long time. It's pretty cool when you just have it just kind of jump out at you at times. But he's wanting us to be workers, diligent workers of the Word and getting accurate how to, how to find what we need to find, the answers that we need to find. And we can do that. 
And, uh, and, you know, and you can ask somebody to help you do that in the beginning too. But, he'll, but it's important to do. Um, when it talks about redeeming the time, you know, I was studying this out, it means buying up those moments which others seem to throw away. That is so powerful. Redeeming the time. You know, we can be such time wasters, but he's but this commentator is like buying up the moments that others just seem to throw away. By focusing on God's words, being students of his word, seeking his will through the word, um, we can redeem the time. And when you do that, God will start doing things in your life. Years years and years ago, I was in uh um just saved a um not even two years, I guess, yet. And um, I was in my first permanent party. I've told this story before, it's been a while. But um, we had a midweek service, and I, had, um, I, I, I was married. Uh, Lisa and I uh, got married, and, and so we had an apartment in the city. But I had a guy from the barracks that wanted to go to the, the church, and I would pick him up. And so I would take him back, you know, into the fort and, and to the, his barracks, you know, um, our company barracks. And, uh, and, and I was studying, and it was like everything, you know, because back then, again, he was sometimes doing that. And, and it was just like, it was just for a couple of weeks or so, it was just like Satan, demons, you know, people possessed by the devil and the power of the devil and... I got to be like, Lord, what is, I, I, I mean, I did, I, you know, because I just, I, I learned real early, just talk to him. Don't try to be, you're not going to impress him with trying to sound all religious and everything. I just be like, Lord, what's up with all this devil stuff? I do not know, I'm not enjoying it, God. I don't want to just be looking at the devil and what he's doing all the time. Why are you having me see all this devil stuff? And then we're on the way home. I get, I, you know, it's after the midweek service, and I'm taking this guy home. And there's somebody that's walking on the side of the road, and and um, and I I would pick up people, you know, um, you know, they're heading into the fort, you know, and and uh, because I didn't have a car, and I used to have to walk and hope somebody would pick me up, because if I didn't get picked up, I'd have to end up walking about four miles or so to get to my company from where I lived, and. And so, um, so I'd give a ride, just like you know, to somebody heading in there, just like I always wished I got a ride and was blessed to have. Well, I pick this guy up. He gets in the back seat of my car, and all of a sudden he says, "You been to church?" And I said, "Yeah. How'd you know that?" Well, I had a Chevette, you know, with a uh, bucket seats in there, and in the middle of between the seats, of course, my Bible worked. I always had my Bible with me. It's before iPads and iPhones, you have your word with you. So I had a physical Bible with me everywhere I went, all the time. But it was church too, and it, so it's sitting there. And I said, He says, Well, I, I, I see your Bible there. And then he said, It, it, it makes me feel repelled. <laughs> now, my buddy. He's, he's not where I'm at. And I see him like, what's going on? And this guy just opens up and starts to talk about his, his black, um, it's like uh, one of those nylon bomber jackets. And, and you know, in the military, there's an opportunity to get custom-made jackets, have embroidered all over, or patches put on them and that sort of thing. And um, he's like, yeah, I... Uh, um, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, a Satanist. And, uh, you know, and, and he's, you know, I'm like, well, why, why, do you, why would you worship the devil? And tell me about that. And so he's like, yeah, I, you know, I, we do this. And he's like, yeah, these patches on my, you know, each one of them are these things like I've accomplished in, in, in the Satanic church. And he says, and this one, you know, it, it's, so, it's so, you know, powerful and evil. I don't, you know, I don't know what it is, but it makes the other Satanists scared. Now, my friends, gripping, white knuckled, the the, you know, uh, the the handle of the, the car, he's you know, holding on, and he's getting nervous. But I've already been prepared. I've been, you know, knowing the 
devil and his power and everything. I said, why would you wear something that it makes fellow Satanists not even want to be around you? He says they, they don't want to be around it. I'm like, if it's that evil, why would you want to do that? And he's like, oh, he just thought it was cool. And like, you know, you, you're searching for power, aren't you? That's what you're drawn to as you're looking for power. You know, I can, I, I want to tell you something. God's power is so much bigger. What the, the devil has, that's not that. And so I'm just starting to witness to him and, 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 and was prepared, not nervous, was at peace, shared that, and was able to present the gospel saying, you know, the, the power you have is nothing compared to what God has to offer. And as I wrapped that up and said, you can find that through Jesus Christ and he'll fill you with his spirit and, and all this stuff. And as right as we're pulling into the parking lot of, of the company he needed to be dropped off at, he gave his life to Jesus Christ in that parking lot, took that jacket and threw it in the dumpster and went in that building, a new creation. See, God can, he can do things as we're, as we're living this out um, and use you for in your own life, He'll help you and benefit you like when He did with that job assignment. It positioned me to be a witness to others. People knew I wasn't, but they also knew my testimony was whatever I eat, whatever I drink, whatever I do, I do it all to the glory of God. That is my purpose. That is what I strive for. I will not accept average. I'm going to do the best of my ability. And with God's help, I'm going to always give Him the glory. And people knew that testimony, and when they would see me accomplishing things, they knew there's a God in heaven that really is working. You know, it's like when they looked at the disciples and they said, where did you get this wisdom? Where did you get this knowledge? You're, you're just, you know, they even wondered that about Jesus. Isn't this just the carpenter's son? Where did he get this? The disciples, aren't these just, you know, Galilean? Where they haven't been to any kind of training to know this stuff? God will use you. Amen. Hallelujah. So we can redeem the time by, by taking advantage of every moment, making it about God, putting him first. See, we can't understand God's will um, without learning his word. And to acquaint ourselves with Him through His Word, we will learn how to glorify Him, what pleases Him, as we're seeking what makes Him happy, what pleases Him. I'll finish up the chapter next week. Because these are powerful things and, and they're worth taking time. Um, talk about being drunk with wine next week, you know. Um, God's given us these great alternatives. Let's close in prayer for now. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for just reminding us that we're to put you first, to put your word first, to seek your will, to, to choose you, to choose walking in the light. As, as you've been building this inside of us over these last couple of weeks to, to be aware of our enemy, be aware of what's going on around us, circumspect, uh, um, so being alert, being vigilant, but yet at the same time, Lord, being focused on your word, uh, filled with your spirit, sensitive to your voice, and learning your will as we just seek you, seek your kingdom through our prayer, re uh, prayer time, through our Bible reading, Lord, through our, our devotion to you, just walking with you and learning um, how to be led and, and guided by the Spirit. We thank you that we are developing in these things and that you are helping us on this journey of life. We want to please you and we want to grow in you. We want to be used by you to help others come to know you, to help them on their journey, Lord, even as we've been benefited from others helping us. Use us, we pray. Use us, we pray. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name.